Uh, hello, all. Uh, my name is Alex Nastas. With me is Remy Vichery. Uh, we're technical marketing experts at uh, Neos Networks. Um, and in this demo, we're going to show you how a properly designed SDN solution can uh, help you migrate from monolithic uh, applications to the microservices. Um, so we'll start by talking, uh, by giving a few information, some information about the Neosh networks. We're a Nokia venture that has been uh, born in Silicon Valley and uh, it's still based there, but it's, it has a global team. Uh, we're mainly focused on the data center network uh, and uh, mostly in the cloud context. Um, we offer uh, open, high-performance, and scalable as then a solution that uh, actually supports uh, uh, any workload anywhere over uh, and any over any physical infrastructure. We are also members of uh, OpenStack uh, community since Size House release. Um, so our product, which is called the Virtualized Services Platform, uh, consists of three main components. Uh, there's the Virtualized Services Directory, uh, which is the management, uh, the management engine. Uh, it uh, has an northbound API, uh, and uh, it's used mainly for um, uh, implementing network policies and. Uh, enforcing them across all the workload. Uh, the second uh, component is the control plane component, which is the VSC, shortly, uh, is the Virtualized Services Controller. This is, um, this is based on uh, Nokia SROS, which is a high, highly reliable uh, routing engine. Um, and the third component is the data plane, uh, which is based on the OpenV switch. It's called the virtualized routing and switching. It's based on OpenV switch. It has the user plane, some, well, some user plane libraries modified. Uh, and uh, it basically does distribu distributed routing and switching across uh, all connected uh, nodes. Um, so now that we discussed uh, Neosh, uh, let's just go through, let's just go over monolithic uh, versus uh, microservices. Uh, so what is a mon monolithic application? This is a traditional application which is deployed as a single piece and maintained as such. Um, so there's a few drawbacks, well, challenges into this application. The first one is uh, size and complexity. So the, when you need to add a service to that, uh, to, to these kind of applications, uh, the complexity increases exponentially. So um, and uh, before of this increased uh, complexity, the imp the impact of the change in case of upgrades is uh, is not mastered. So it's often not understood, uh, not well understood. Um, this leads to disruptive updates, uh, so the, this continuous integration process is difficult. And uh, there's also reliability issues uh, in, case, well, in case there is a bug in one module of the application, the whole application can go down because of that. Um, as opposed to uh, the first, uh, as opposed to monolithic architecture, so microservices, uh, these are modular applications that are deployed as loosely coupled components. Um, so there's uh, ability to decompose applications, uh, the application into multiple uh, 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 modules. Uh, these uh, can lead to easy upgrades uh, because every module can be uh, upgraded individually. Um, the developers they can choose their own technologies. They don't want. They don't need to stick to choices that have been made uh, by the enterprise in the beginning of the project. Uh, there's also independent uh, scaling, uh, so meaning that we can scale one module without touching the other ones, so there's no impact of our overall architecture. Um, so 
well, uh, well, this, uh, well, the microservices is the is the right way to build an uh, application today. Uh, this is still can be challenging uh, and uh, disruptive process, uh, mainly because of the network, which needs to adapt to, to this change. Uh, the question we should ask ourselves right now is: Should we? So how how do we make really migrate from monoliths to microservices without service disruption? Uh, and this is where I want to hand it to Remy, who's going to go through that yep. process. Thanks, Alex. So now I'm going to like describe a little bit uh, what are the steps to migrate your application from uh, monolithic architecture to something more like what we are doing doing today is like microservices. So the first step uh, will be to um, have like an application, a monolithic application deploy on the bare metal server, which is composed of like a database, API, and uh, web UI. And the first step will be to like decorrelate the application from the database and we'll move the application from the bare metal to a virtual machine hosted on OpenStack. Uh, the next step could be to actually develop new modules, for example, an ordering system for the, for the web app or a new web UI. And what you want to do is deploy them on Kubernetes, like to have more agility, more uh, flexibility in the deployment. But uh, as Alex said, the networking to uh, the network, there is a network challenge, how you can connect everything together. And that's where like Nuage Networks provide the solution is we can connect any kind of workload. So bare metal to containers, containers to virtual machines, and everything is working together as it was in the same network. So that's basically what, what we do. Um, to export this service uh, in this demo, we'll use uh, two different type of load balancer. One is uh, the uh, OpenStack load balancer service. Uh, in this particular case, we'll be using uh, Radware Altion load balancer. Um, for Kubernetes, we'll be using uh, ingress controller based on traffic. So I will just jump back to my laptop to start the actual demo. All right, it didn't. Okay, let's see. Oh. Okay, that's good. All right. Okay. I don't know if everybody sees everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Clear. So, okay. It doesn't look good. I think it could. Was it fair? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, here we are. So first, um, I will be opening some stuff. So how we're open set controller and uh, how we'll be opening first the web application. So uh, we're the first step of the demo where we actually have an application that is deployed on a bare metal server. Yeah. Right. So this application is, as I said before, deployed on the bare metal server. Uh, so everything is on the, on the bare metal, the database, the API, and the web UI. So currently, if I'm going, like, for example, to, to the beers, it actually goes to the API and retrieve all the products from the API. If I'm going to the source, it actually retrieve all the source from the API as well. So that, as I said, the first step will be to decorrelate this web API, this web UI and the API from the bare metal server to a virtual machine. So what we'll do is um, we'll actually we'll actually launch um, a heat template that will um, deploy the, 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 the virtual machine. So this is just basically a script that will launch a heat template to deploy the virtual machine on the OpenStack uh, platform. So as you can see, we have like a stack that is being created. Uh, it's actually deploying a virtual machine and associating the virtual machine IP address to the load balancing of the service pool. So the, the VM is running. Now we are going to do something is, as our application is residing, uh, the database is residing on the bare metal server, we need to connect this bare metal server to OpenStack. And uh, Nuage Networks has developed like an extension for Neutron, 
uh, to actually use uh, and configure gateways directly from the host. So you'll be able to like select any gateway in your data center and actually configure a bridging between OpenStack subnets and infrastructure subnets. Which so is I'm, basically bridging overlay to underlay, right? So I'm taking, I'm doing a bridge, and then I'm selecting the database underlay network, and I'm clicking update. At this time, like a neutron will make some calls to our management engine, and we'll start creating the configuration for the gateway. So now the gateway is like reconfigured. Um, we'll check if the application is is running. Okay, so the server is running, and if we go here. Um, and we'll open the application. So the application is working. That's exactly the same one because we didn't add ne any new module. Yet. We just like migrated the code that we had on the bare metal to a virtual machine. So it's exactly running the same the same application. The only difference is the application on OpenStack is accessing the database using the new hash gateway. So now the next the next step, I, as I um, explained before, will be to create new modules. We had, for example, to add an ordering system for the web app. Um, and change the UI. So what we'll do is uh, we'll actually deploy some communities pods and reconfigure the communities load balancer to expose a new UI and a new API. All right, so let's go to Kubernetes uh, cube, cubes. So first, I'm going to deploy uh, the new module, which is the API order uh, AP, um, uh, service. The second one will be the updated um, web UI. So now we have like deployed the web UI and the API, the new API. We can reconfigure the ingress controller, which is like the Kubernetes load balancer, to uh, actually dispatch the traffic inside the Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, so for those that don't know what a Kubernetes ingress controller is, it's just a reverse proxy that does layer 7 content switching. And based on the HTTP request, it'll just dispatch them on different pods. So as you can see, we have the pods are running. They are connected to the new Azure network subnet, which is also accessible from OpenStack. Uh, and then we can check also if the ingress has been created. So we have created this ingress, uh, and it, that points to our um, public FQDM. So now let's go to OpenStack, uh, because we will need to reconfigure the LBAS to actually um, Se segregate the traffic between the new UI, the new API, and the old API. So we'll have to reconfigure the Elbas uh, load balancer, in that case, the Alteon, to um, dispatch the traffic. So we'll be creating layer 7 policies and layer 7 rules to actually redirect the traffic in two different clusters. I'm going to use like a script because the commands are pretty complex, and I don't want to mistype, mistype anything. Um, all right. So the first one will be to um, create a new, a new policy in position one, because that we want the, this policy to be ab applied first. It will actually um, uh, be handled first, and then we'll, we'll, we'll create a new policy, the, new, the policy two, which will actually go to the Kubernetes cluster. Then just policy alone cannot, cannot do anything. So we need to associate like layer seven rules to um, uh, policies. So the first, the first policy and the first rule will be to redirect slash API slash V1 to the legacy web app, the one that is running on the, on, the, on the virtual machine. The second rule will be to redirect slash API V2, the new order uh, mechanism that we have implemented, to the Kubernetes cluster. And the last one will be to redirect the UI, the UI, um, the, the, the web front end, to the Kubernetes cluster as well. So as of now, uh, we have reconfigured the LBAS, we have configured uh, Kubernetes, and if we go back to our application, and oh, not this one, but this one. And I don't know. <laughs> All right. OK, well, this one. Sorry about that. Wrong tab. So that's the new application. So we changed the background. We added a couple of things. Uh, the order, uh, the order mechanism. Uh, so we can like now order some some beers for tonight. Um, we can go to the card, uh, do some payment. I don't know, tests and pay. And I will check it out. As you can see, we have a response like from the API that said that the order has been processed. So that means that the container running on Kubernetes has accessed the database still running as a bare metal server. 
The last step could be uh, that we have this like VM still running on OpenStack, we and we can just get rid of it. Um, what we can do is decompose this like the the whole API, the V1, which has the product and the stored resources in two different services on Kubernetes. So that's pretty simple. Uh, we can uh, go back to Kubernetes and create some other pod. API product. API store. OK, so uh, if we check the, the pods, now we have some new pods. The ingress controller is automatically re reconfigured itself. We don't have to update it. It's already done in the background. The only thing that we have to do is go back to the, to the, to the um, uh, OpenStack controller and reconfigure another time LBAS to actually remove the, the first rule that was handling the, the V1 traffic to be redirected now to the Kubernetes cluster. So first, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm creating a new rule because I don't want any disruption of traffic. So I'm creating a new rule that will say anything that is API v1 redirected to Kubernetes. And then I will remove the, the, the original rule to make sure that when a new request comes in, it will be redirected to Kubernetes. So just to summarize, we're like traversing one load balancer as a service in OpenStack, which sends our request to the ingress controller and uh, to the Kubernetes system. Everything is connected in the, into the same route, global route in the main Benioche. So now the LBAS is reconfigured. Um, we can go back to the application and see that it still works. But I mean, it could be the still the old application. So what I will do is I will just go back to OpenStack. And I will just shut down the VM to show you that it's actually running everything on uh, Kubernetes. So now the VM is ported off. If we go back to the application, it still works. I can start, st still uh, see my products. I can still see my stores. I can still order some stuff. So the only thing that we can like do that the final step could be like to migrate your database to some other containers like stateful containers on Kubernetes, but we don't have any time. Like it's two minutes left, so um, I will just finish with that, and I will end over to Alex to to finish this talk. Um, oh, we need to put that. Yeah, thanks for me. Uh, indeed, it's a great demo. Um, so. It's uh, in the conclusion. I'd like to say that uh, well, the evolution from monolithic applications to microservices uh, it's a really complex uh, task, and uh, uh, networking is only a small part of it. But it's uh, crucial to have a networking solution that can adapt to all the workloads and that can keep connecting all these workloads at all the steps of the migration. So. Um, as we saw in the demo, Nuage VSP uh, can do that. Uh, so basically, it interconnects all kinds of workloads and uh, can adapt to new use cases. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, this solution, just come to see us our, at our booth. It's the booth A10 is a Nokia, uh, just behind. Um, we. We encourage you to try Nuage. You can do that by going to nuagex.io. It's completely free. Uh, it takes five minutes to register and to spin up uh, a Nuage environment on your own and uh, start, to start, start test, testing right away. Uh, another important event, uh, this is the book signings for DevOps for Networking uh, by Stephen Armstrong. Uh, Stephen Armstrong himself will be signing them at our booth uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. We'll be giving away 25 tray books per day. Uh, first come, first serve. Thanks a lot. Uh, if you have any questions, we don't have time. We have 16 seconds left. Uh, just find us. We'll be around. Find us just after the demo and we'll discuss anything. <laughs>